Nothing late over Boston College at the break of this ACC quarterfinal matchup. We take a look at the halftime stats out of this one. What jumps out to you on the page here? To me, it's the number of corners that we've seen. Clemson has the height, and they have the service to be very, very dangerous. And so the fact that BC has given up seven corners already is not good for the Eagles. They'll want to come out and correct that in the second half. Clemson came in averaging 5.6 corners a game, so that number has been exceeded. Let's see how Boston College looks to turn it around with a trip to North Carolina in the semifinals on the line with a win. Get gifts and a snap with free two-day shipping at Target. This is the not-for-sale Kia Forte drift car. And this is the all-new 2019 Kia Forte. We built one of them with an available smart trunk. You know, so you could tell them apart. We welcome you back to Newton, second half of this ACC quarterfinal set to commence with Clemson. The lone goal so far scored by Mariana Speckmeyer in the 19th minute. Tigers up by the 1-0 total. Let's go back to September for a second when these two teams met for the first time. September 30th at Clemson. Similar in the fact that Clemson kind of controlled the run of play and found some openings in the Boston College defense. Now, their goal didn't come till the second half either. But BC really, until about the final 20 minutes, there are a lot of similarities to what we've seen. Now, in those final 20 minutes, they got Olivia Vaughn twice on the board for the victory. How do the Eagles change what we saw in the first half and try to find those last 20 minutes that we saw September 30th at Clemson? The Eagles will all need to be on the same page here. They need to figure out if they're pressing or if they're going to sit back and play on the counter. But getting all 11 players on the field on the same page, looking to stay calm and composed and play this sort of possessional style of soccer that we're seeing from them right now is how they're going to get the results and play the way that they played in the last 20 minutes against Clemson down in Clemson. One nothing is our score. The Eagles, who certainly have not trailed all that much this year. They have been in control most of the time, though they have trailed a couple times in just recent memory, those Carolina and Duke losses, which came right before the win against Pittsburgh, the number one and the number two seeds in the ACC tournament down on Tobacco Road. In the back, it's Sandy McKeever from Windsor, England, who played a solid First half was tested a couple of times. One probably really good chance for Boston College. Officially registered two saves on the board. It's Gabby Carrero working against Sarah Osborne, the junior who we did not see in the first half for Clemson. Again, at the college level, it is free substitutions. You can't return if you're subbed out in the first half, but in the second half, free substitutions all around, different than we see on the national stage. Tigers ball at midfield. Pretty good running ball in here. Kayla Duran got to it first for Boston College and steers it out the side. And you can see Boston College starting to play a bit more composed now, but Clemson still looks like they have that that calm confidence that they that they left the first half with. We're going to see Staub again on a throw in here, and we'll see. We saw in the first half she can throw it into the, about the six-yard box. So every single throw in that they get this deep is going to be dangerous for the Tigers. Still not loose. Good job by Jenna Bike, who got a piece of that. Kayla Jennings may have as well. Heading towards the side, and this will be out for a throw-in coming up for Clemson. And BC wants to clear that ball high and wide. You don't want to clear that ball into the middle, but again, you can see that, that commitment from BC to throw their bodies in front of the way to make sure that nothing gets in on goal. There is Sam Staub, one of the center backs, and this is really a big part of this game with Staub, who's done most of the throw-ins today, playing so well in the back. Gianna Mitchell as well on the other side for Boston College. These are two huge keys to how these teams play. Most certainly because they hold down the, the center back position on both teams and yet they're so involved in the offense. You see there Mitchell with five goals and an assist, Staub with one goal and ten assists. These are remarkable numbers for center backs. So getting these two players more involved is going to help feed the offense and, and as we said earlier in the broadcast, 
this is a battle of the offenses. We need both offenses to step up, and so to be fed by those center backs is going to be beneficial. Alexis Bryant starts on the goal kick, settles for Jenna Bike. Immediately, though, taken away by Clemson. Mackin did a good job to start it. Antio. Stopped by Kayla Duran, who's passed short for Carrero. So throw in coming up for the Tigers. And those are the mistakes that, that Foley is not going to be happy with. When you're not under pressure, you need to make sure that you're connecting those passes. Those are those self-inflicted wounds uh, that Coach Redwanski was speaking about as well. And so far in this game, BC has made more of the mistakes than Clemson has, and, and that's reflected in the score. So hopefully BC can start to get more, more accurate with their passing and just tighten everything up. Jillian Jennings tried to push it, but answered by Jones for Clemson. Speckmeyer and Duran on the near side. Courtney Jones with some space. Through a ball answered by Gianna Mitchell looking for Brooke Power. Throw in here comes from Sarah Osborne, the junior, Chesapeake Beach, Maryland native. Going to get stuck here throwing out towards the side. Clemson will come in for another throw. Is Stop, no matter where it is on the field, she's going to take most of these, especially the long throws for Clemson, as you mentioned. She's been effective on it. That's set up the lone goal that we've seen so far over the course of the first 50 minutes of this game. Another deep throw. Kayla Jennings was there for Boston College. Jones went for it on a whack. Tried by Mackenzie Smith. And Rosima headed it down. Olivia Vaughn, who is caught pretty far back there. Here is Kayla Duran to get started for Jenna Bike. Pretty good heading touch and a chance for the Eagles offense to set up, but good job answering by Osborne. And this is the exciting part about this game. Clemson does such a good job of when BC loses the ball in their defensive end to just continue to press them so that they can't get that ball out. And what BC has been known for so well over the season is as they win that ball in their defense can they transition out find a long ball hit their strikers on those transitional moments and so bc does a great job of actually getting out and starting that counter again and that's more of what we want to see from bc that's where they've had so much success this season and where they'll have success again today if they can continue to transition Rolf Sima punching for bike, header is too tall. Decent development there for Boston College, but the header is a bit high. And you'll see this great service in by Rafsima, and what makes Bike that open is she uses her speed and she anticipates that ball coming in. That's how BC is going to break down this Clemson defense. They're very great. The defense is very good when they can see BC's players in front of them. But when Jenna Bike or any of these players make a run on the blind side like she did there, she's going to be wide open. Throw in comes for Jillian Jennings as the Eagles trying to get behind this orange wall, trailing one nothing. Coffee, nice touch for Olivia Vaughn. Has to work backwards though for Kayla Duran. Jillian Jennings on the takeaway. No foul called as she got around with some space. Looking for Vaughn, but the through ball was intercepted. Antidu stepped up and now Clemson with numbers coming back. Room for Courtney Jones, the redshirt freshman. Jones could not get around Rolf Sima, a strong play. Now here comes Sam Coffey for Carrero. For the most part, Clemson's done a pretty good job of limiting what Sam Coffey is able to do. She's so skilled so often, but just in terms of the amount we've called her name. Clemson's done a pretty good job 
at least keeping her in check and not letting her really get her run of the field today. Clemson has done a great job of clogging the middle when they don't have the ball. And then when they do have the ball, they do a nice job of opening up and making the field as big as possible. When you make the field that big, it's very challenging for Boston College or any team that doesn't have the ball to then defend against that because there's so much space. We are about nine minutes into the second half. There's still plenty of time to go. We know that at this point, still literally 36 minutes on the board. When does the kind of pushing extra bodies forward for Boston College start if we hold at this score line? First, let's see Vaughn tried to get around, but again, it's answered well. Antio was able to knock it out. So we'll see a, a push forward coming probably with about 20, 25 minutes left in the half. You don't want to push players forward too soon for fear of exposing your back line and then having them score a second goal. That's a really challenging situation to have to dig yourself out of. But at some point, you do need enough time to throw bodies forward and to try to put some pressure on Clemson's defensive line and on their goalkeeper. So we'll start to see things change probably around 20 minutes left in the half. Kayla Duran for Boston College. Eagles set up so much on offense just in their own run of play, how they normally like to play. This ball is a foul called against the Eagles. This is going the other way. Let's take a look at this Clemson defense. And again, here we see Sam Staub making sure that she comes in, she gets the ball on Michaela Vaughn. Michaela Vaughn hasn't been able to do anything because of this Clemson defense, and that's being led by Sam Staub. She gets in, she's involved in the offense, but she comes back and she makes big tackles on defense. Kayla Duran chasing after it on the near side. Good run by Courtney Jones to make it difficult all the way through. Micah Rolf Sima now for Boston College sends it out for a Clemson throw. And here's one thing too that we can hear up in the booth is the Clemson back line, specifically Sam Staub, calling press, 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 shift. She's giving so much instruction to her team. And that's why Clemson has been so successful. They are all on the same page. They are all pressing the ball together. They're moving as a unit. And when you move as a unit, everyone has a man to cover. That makes it so challenging to get the ball, to keep the ball. And that's what BC is finding. They, they're getting smothered by orange jerseys every time they have the ball. And that's better from Mitchell to look to switch it, but it has to be quicker. Again, you saw the Clemson forward get a touch on that ball. Here comes Varela straight through. On for Vaughn. Just missed. Better from Boston there. Better to switch the ball out and then attack that space. We haven't seen that much from Boston College yet. Olivia Bonacorso, freshman from right down the road here, Middleton, Massachusetts. So uh, her family on hand here today. Number of U.S. Soccer National Training Center events in her youth career. First year at Clemson. Registered three shots on goal so far on her time as a Tiger. Olivia Vaughn. It's out off of Clemson. Vaughn will leave it for Varela to come up as throw as, as we talked about before the designated thrower for the Eagles again just a really good answer by Clemson right off of the throw immediately on an orange foot as we say up here in New England do your job and everyone on Clemson is doing their job they know when to step they know when to drop and that's giving this Boston College team fits they can't figure out how how to break down this Clemson team foul this will go the other way Clemson will get a restart and that right there by fouling that deep in Clemson's half you give them a free out you can't you can't foul and then continue to just give them the ball when you're pressing like that it's important that you don't foul so that you can get your team up and around just like Clemson has been doing so that BC can then get numbers around that ball and win that ball back but by fouling you give them a free ball out of their defensive half Pereira lets this one steal out so another Clemson throw in coming up 
They have answered every defensive challenge that we've seen so far. Lauren Harks, redshirt junior, comes into the game. Center midfielder role for Clemson. Harks' name might sound familiar. Her dad, John, was part of the United States national team for 13 years from 1987 to 2000. You're starting to see some frustration here with BC. They're, they're fouling more and they think the fouls are unfair. As a player, it is so important that you keep your composure in this because this is, a, this is a win or go home. And so you must keep your head on straight. You must walk away, not argue with the referee because when I was playing, as soon as I would see a player argue with the ref, I knew I had him beat. Here comes Vaughn, good play defensively. That was Staub again coming back to help. Jillian Jennings tries one for pretty far out. And McGeever there for the task. Only one goal on the board so far. It came off a throw in for Clemson. It started with Staub leading the way, power on the assist. Speckmeyer knocked it home. That was a 19th minute goal, and that's still holding up as the decider at this moment, 1 0, the Tigers lead. Now, just going back to the frustration point you just made about Boston College, this is not a team that plays kind of settling back. They're, they're playing well when they are creating tons of offensive opportunities. That's why they're second in the conference in goals and, and way up there in the nation. And those opportunities just have not come today because of what Clemson's done defensively. Clemson has smothered this BC team, and so they have not been able to get those balls into their front runners. Their front runners haven't been able to hold the ball, and BC hasn't been able to get numbers up around the ball. They have been forced back by this Clemson attack, and Clemson's defense has done a great job of pressing up with that team. So you see here, Clemson's back line is just barely over midfield. They want to make this space as small as possible and keep BC in their half, and they're executing to perfection right now. Alexis Bryant will come back. It's not to say that Clemson's had many chances in the second half, because they haven't, but really neither team has had it in the second half. It's been a little bit of a differently played game, and it's been one with Clemson doing just a great defensive work so far. Livia Vaughn trying to change it. Here is Sam Coffey with space to the midfield, a dangerous spot. Jenna Bike for BC using her speed, slides one in, and McGeever right there. And that's a great attack from Boston College, but look, you can see how many orange jerseys got back. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine orange jerseys got back on that counterattack, and Boston College only had four players running up into the box, so you can see BC is still sitting back, and that's not going to help them score if all of their numbers are still in their defensive area or in and around half field instead of sprinting forward to get bodies up into the attack. Speckmeyer out ahead, Gianna Mitchell letting this one roll out on the side. And the throw-in is awarded to Boston College. Second half here from Newton with Rachel Wood, our whole ACC Network extra crew. Eric Galanti alongside for this ACC quarterfinal matchup, Boston College and Clemson with the winner to take on the winner of North Carolina and Virginia Tech down in Cary, North Carolina on Friday. In the ACC semifinals at last check, Carolina had a 1-0 lead on Virginia Tech at the break. Here is Olivia Vaughn. Pushes forward, but again, it's Clemson who is controlling in the back. Mitchell steps up for Boston College for Varela. All the way back in on goal, and Sandy McGeever is there to get it. Tigers have never won an ACC championship. Made the semifinals in 2016. They've not made an ACC final since 2002. Boston College has not made a conference tournament final since 2003, when they were, of course, still in the Big East Conference. They lost in penalty kicks to Villanova in that 2003 final. This is a great opportunity for both teams. They have great teams this year, and I can't wait to see which team wins here and, and what happens in the next round. And so here we see Gabby Carrero, and what I would like to see from her more, because so much of the play 
is on the right-hand side. I would love to see her tuck in more and get more involved with the play. She's staying out wide left, which is creating space, but BC cannot find her. So here we go. Unfortunately, she slipped, but I would have loved to have seen her turn and run on that one. Rolf Seema pushes for Carrero, tried to give it back to Coffey. That was deflected off Clemson, so Boston College throwing coming up. It's interesting, Sam Coffey there. Felt like everyone was ready to go quick, and Coffey was kind of, right, we're still okay, settle down. Still a lot of time at this point. Here is Vaughn. Just could not get around. That's a great play by Danny Antio once again. We've talked a lot about Staub and what she's done, but it, it's really across the board what, what Clemson's worked on defensively here. They're moving very cohesively as a back four and as a unit. And when you play defense, that's so important because if someone's not on the same page, if someone steps out, you create huge holes. And that's what Boston has been so good in exploiting in this past season. No change on the scoreboard to what we saw earlier at halftime. All of those in the second half going on right now. All the winners will move on to carry North Carolina on Friday. And then the final will be a week from today. Game you can catch all in the ESPN family of networks. Alexis Bryant in the back. I want to go back to that last play for a second. Obviously, it's 1-0. We're 25 minutes left. And not to say that BC's forwards should not go back and play defense, but you get a look of where it's Jenna Bike all the way back that pushes that ball out the side. At this moment, trailing, that's probably farther back than you'd like Jenna Bike, but that's what Clemson has created and forced BC to be farther back than they might like at this point of the game. And one thing about Jenna Bike and the way that Allison Foley has her team playing, her outside forwards do drop back that deep, and they do put in that defensive work, and that's what I've loved about BC so much this season is they use their speed on both sides of the ball. However, you make a great point. You can't drop that far back when you're losing and it's win or go home because as soon as BC wins the ball, and this is what we've been seeing, they don't have anyone to play the ball to. Clemson safely in the midfield at the moment. Antio. Answered by Alyssa Barella. Here is Jenna Bike. Go for Micah Wolf Sima. Jillian Jennings now. The start of the runs have been there for Boston College, but they have not been able to get through much in this second half. Ball is out for Clemson throw. This half's been played much more in the midfield than we saw the first half of this game. First head to Ruth Seema, second for Kayla Duran. A look pass from Kayla Jennings to her sister Jillian. And BC starting to do a good job of moving the ball quickly. So often they're getting caught in possession because Clemson is there to put the pressure on. Once they move the ball quickly, that's going to help them open Clemson up. So let's see if they can continue to do that for the next 23 minutes. Alexis Bryant will take your time. High bounce. Good job to get positioned by Osborne, but not fouling. Here's Carly Leipzig just into the game. Gives for Cabby Carrero. Best build up in a while for the Eagles. Carrero leaves for Leipzig, and her spinning shot was wide. Just kind of had to attack that one, and it was wide. 15 schools all on one network. It's a new place to call home. It is the ACC Network, and it's coming in August of 2019. Best run in a while for Boston College. Most certainly, and you can see that they played one and two passes. They did some combination plays. They pulled more players into the attack, and as a result, they were able to combine in order to get around the Clemson defense. Here's Jenna Bike sliding in and does create a corner. It is only the second corner for Boston College today, a team that averages near six, but this is heck of a hustle play from Jenna Bike. Again, we see Jenna Bike just using her speed. I want to see her get more on the ball. She had success against Pitt doing that, and they're going to have success again if they can find her the ball up the field. And she had success early in this game against Clemson. Sam Coffey to take the corner. 
Looking to the near post, it was short of that near post. Emily Langendurfer will come back into the game for Boston College. And it is Kayla Jennings who comes off for the Eagles. We're about at that point where Boston College has got to push a little bit farther forward. That is two possessions in a row that they've at least gotten behind Clemson's defense and into the box. And there's that long throw that we talked about as well. Again, behind the defense, getting into the box. This is more, this is more of the Boston College that we're used to seeing. Right now you have Lockhead and Leipzig in, along with Coffey and Jenna Bike. Up front for the Eagles. McGeever's launch, Langendurfer was there. BC getting the more 50-50 balls at this moment. And here is Jenna Bike with speed and help out wide. Leads for Riley Lockhead, centering cross. Header is just too high. And that's so much better from Boston College. We've seen Jenna Bike hustle all game long, but now it's a, but now it's effective. You see her; she gets this ball, she turns, and she just takes them on at speed, finds the ball wide, and then is able to cross into the box. That's how you break down defenses. You come up the middle, you play the ball wide to stretch that back line, and then the cross in. You're looking for your runners to come into the box, and and they connected on that one. Unfortunately, it just didn't go in the net. But that's what BC needs more of. Coming up on 20 minutes remaining here from Newton in this ACC quarterfinal matchup. It's two teams who last met in the ACC tournament in 2016. A Clemson win in the quarterfinal round. That one down in South Carolina. Here is Micah Rolf Sima. Goes for Riley Lockhead. Good job screen by Sarah Osborne. And that goes right to Allison Foley. That got clipped on the way by, so it'll stay with Clemson possession. And a beautiful job defensively by Clemson. You see Riley Lockhead gets the ball and immediately is swarmed by three orange jerseys. What BC needs to do now is they need to get players around the ball. So as they see that ball switching field, Micah Rosifa has the ball, and then she's going to play it to Riley Lockett. You need to see Sam Coffey and some of the other midfielders coming in to give her support. She can't go 1v3. Good challenge on the play. Clemson will sub, bring in Ellen Colborn. Played some good minutes earlier back into the game. Rowan coming from Osborne. Speckmeyer comes back to get it. Here's Osborne. Riley Lockhead with good pressure. It's Boston College ball. Nice job there by Lockhead. Much better pressure from Lockhead. Langenderfer tries to get this one. Answered by Bonacorso, the freshman, all the way back for Alexis Bryant. Feels like the tide is starting to shift as the Eagles are sending more bodies forward. Getting a little bit deeper into the Clemson end. Can they find an equalizer here? You can feel it. You can hear it from their bench. They call for the trainer here as Jillian Jennings got knocked in the head. That's immediately when they call for the trainer. And Allison Foley going out there as well. She immediately started to head out there to make sure that Jillian Jennings is okay. And Jennings does a great job on this play. Both of these girls have their eye on the ball, but unfortunately Jennings took the worst of that as she flicked her head up and back and Smith came right through the back of her head. So they will check here. You don't want to take any chances at this point. And she'll have to come off now for concussion protocol before she's allowed to go back on, and that'll be a loss in the meantime for BC. Jennings is walking under her own power. They will check and make sure. And it will be her sister who comes back in for her, Kayla Jennings. Boston College men's team. It's the men's basketball group. Kai Bowman is there in the middle in the black winter cap. 
is looking on. The winter caps are, it's cool, but it's fall weather cool. We're also winter? in so, the box. Well, that's so. fair. But I did turn the heat down a little earlier, so, you know. You did. We are calling yeah. it the windows open, so I guess that's it's right. not that that's, cold. That's exactly right. Criticize from above. That's how we do it. Can also be a fashion thing. I'm all about fashion. That's right. Yeah. So it'll be Leipzig up front after the restart. Leipzig will just knock it in on goal. And away we go once again to... Pressure here. You can see Mc McEver just trying to run that clock down. She's going to take her time on every single one of these. Ball is out. Clock will stop. And the officials just took Kayla Jennings off. So BC will be inserted incorrectly after that concussion scenario earlier. So she'll be able to come back in with the Eagles play. The quick throw in to come up for Clemson. What I like to hear now from the BC back line, they're, they're yelling at their players, lock it in, lock it in. This is the first we've heard BC's back line be vocal all game long. So you can feel that tide starting to turn, more bodies are going forward, and you can feel that urgency both from the sideline, from the back line, and in the way that they're playing. Rosima did a good job to get out of a one-on-two scenario. This one headed down, Kayla Jennings, who was allowed to re-enter, comes on, Sam Coffey wax forward. But Danny Antio goes back the other way. 17-10 remaining here from Newton. It's a 1-0 Clemson lead. The 19th minute goal still holding up this moment by Mariana Speckmeyer, her 10th of the season. And that has been the lone tally on the board so far. Shots now are favored 10-6, in fact, ahead of Boston College as they've gained some more chances here in the last couple of moments. Ball in here, Bike coming for it, and it just missed her on the header. McGaver comes way out to get it and just beats Leipzig. And again, Jenna Bike just coming in using her speed, and she is fearless. She has put it all on the line today. She has been a grinder for BC. She's throwing her body in the way. She is causing havoc on this Clemson back line. Rosima stopping, pass back to Lockhead, who is too far on the through ball. Clemson content to take every extra second or so they can on some of these goal kicks. They'll bring Brooke Power back in. Clemson has gone one deeper into its bench today. They brought four off the bench. Boston College have bought, brought three as the rotations tighten up this time of the year. Kayla Duran flicks for Riley Lockhead. Leipzig and Lockhead with a lot of big minutes this stage of the game. Wonder if we'll see a fresh Olivia Vaughn. And right on cue, she's set to come into the next clean opportunity. And this is very similar to what they did when they played Clemson the last time. They pulled Vaughn and rested her, and then she came in and had an outstanding last 15 minutes. Back for Gianna Mitchell, who settles. Speckmeyer was in a dangerous spot. Pass back for Alexis Bryant. 50-50 on for Clemson, but Wolfsema got to the second half of it. Better pressure that time from Clemson. Those last couple of passes making it difficult. Antios for Brooke Power. Kayla Duran was there. Clean play. Our official today, John Brady. He's let him play today. He's called it pretty equally. Ball in here. Leipzig is far enough on the run. And I've continued to be impressed with Antio, the other center back for Clemson. We have talked a lot about Staub. But Antio has come up with some 
big time plays. And you see there, she steals the ball, has two BC players running at her, and is composed enough to just slip a, pla a pass right into her player under pressure. Across the ACC is scoring change. Virginia has gone ahead of Louisville, the number three seed. So Virginia has taken a two to one lead in that match down in Charlottesville. So right now, the one and the three seed are up. The four seed and the two seed are down at this moment in the quarterfinal round of the ACC. You see Staub here on the throw-in, which is indicative that Clemson does not want to stop going. They would love to have that second goal, that insurance goal. So they keep playing. They don't want to sit back and just weather the storm of BC. They are still going for a second goal. Ball is out. Borello is going after it. And that will lead to an Eagles restart off of the foul. Sam Coffey will take it. And from this deep, I'd like to see someone else other than Coffey on that ball. I'd rather have Coffey in and around that box. Looking for Kayla Jennings. Just got over her head. Brooke Powers settles for Spackmeyer. Riley Lockhead chasing after it. And Alexis Bryant will go forward. Kayla Duran looking for Sam Coffey. Smith stepped up to get it, and here's Kayla Jennings. Wide for Jenna Bike. Eagles developing. Pass knocked down, and a corner kick is created. It was Staub who knocked it out. BC's going to bring their horses back on here with Olivia Vaughn, Gabby Carrero, and Jillian Jennings all back into the game. And you can see how much success BC is having when they get that ball wide. They're having to stretch that back line. And even though the, the cross didn't go all the way into the box, they get a corner out of it. And we've seen just how dangerous BC can be on corners. Coffey needs to do a better job of getting this ball into the danger area and in play. Her last one was a little bit short, went out of bounds short here. Header for Jillian Jennings. Clemson first on it. And it's cleared out for a throw. Coffey will throw it in again. Glad to be here with a two-time national champion with North Carolina, Rachel Wood. Those pictures have to bring back good memories, I'm sure. Oh, look at those. They do. It was, it was an honor to play in this conference and for that program uh, to play in the ACC tournament and in the NCAA tournament. This is what you wait all season for as a player. So I know that they're reveling in this right now, and, and those pictures allow me to relive a little bit of my glory days. So... Eagles going quick here, trying to continue on in their run of the ACC. Trailing 1-0. Another corner set up. Coffee deeper ball. Header bouncing down. Durant got a piece, but it's cleared out. And there's Durant, the 5'10 center back, just getting up and over those, those Clemson defenders. Great defense. Great coverage on the post, but BC continue to put the pressure on. Can Clemson clear this ball out? Not loose yet. It's still in the box. Boy, that was a couple of dangerous moments. And BC is calling for a handball. Did not get the whistle from our referee, John Brady. He's Duran, who's up right now. Vaughn settles down. Vaughn trying to spin when it was blocked. Here's Coffee now with space. Sam Coffee, and it's headed the other way by Antio. Great defense by Clemson. Seeing Sam Coffey at the top of the box on her left foot is a sight you do not want to see as Clemson. They handled that very well. I would like to see Sam Coffey start getting more involved, start taking some shots from outside the box, see if she can, see if she can find the back of the net. Chances have certainly started to come for Boston College. Is the equalizing tally out there the question now? And take a look at where Kayla Duran is on the field, number 10. She was BC center back. They're playing in a three back now. So Kayla Duran is going to stay up and see if she can help them tally a goal. Alana Hockenhull had to hold up is to avoid being, or excuse me, that's Speckmeyer who had to avoid being offside. Kayla Jennings now going after it. Westlake over to get it though. Clemson, decent job forcing it in deep for Boston College. 9.40 remaining. Again, it was two second-half goals, late second-half goals. That gave Boston College the 2-1 win over Clemson. And they both came from Olivia Vaughn, who settles now, got pushed off 
by Staub once again. Varela getting ready to throw in. Looking for Kayla Duran. Here's Jenna Bike now. Got a little bit of space. Bike tries to flick one in. Duran chasing after it. Settles. Shot is blocked. Antio slid to get it. Bike pushed off, and there is no foul called on the play. A dangerous play. It looked like a good body to body hit to me, but the crowd here is not happy, and neither is the BC bench. Again, Jenna Bike with the work, and you see Kayla Duran just adding a different layer to this offense. We know in high school she played forward and scored 60 goals. And she's and Foley has brought her out of the back line and up front to see if they can help push the BC Eagles to a 1-1 game. You saw the hit on the very end of that replay. Eagles did not get the call they were looking for. Courtney Jones with a lot of space. Rolf Sima comes to catch her and Alexis Bryant now. You know, you mentioned Kayla Duran. Remember, she was forward in her time in high school. So even though the Eagles have her playing in the center back position, she can play up, and that's the real push you're seeing at this moment from Boston College. And I love her as a player. I have watched her play center back, and center back is an incredibly challenging position to play because not only do you have to worry about yourself and the back line, but you have to worry about all of the players in front of you. So the fact that she's been able to step in and do that in the ACC as a freshman and not having played center back is amazing to me. And now here she goes again on the attack. She is just an all-around player, and I think we're going to see a lot from her in the coming years. She's only a freshman. Ball through the middle was never on cage. 7.30 left. Second half from Newton. Eagles, whose position in the NCAA tournament certainly seems secure at this point after just missing the field a season ago, but have their sights on bigger aspirations here in the conference, trailing one nothing in this ACC quarterfinal match. Varela, it's knocked out. Clemson possession. Seven minutes remaining from Newton. And nothing the Eagles can do here with Clemson. Content to take as much time possible off the clock on each of these throws. That got in behind. Gianna Mitchell does keep it in. Back to Varela for Boston College. Out for a BC throw. Eagles are going to go quick. Varela sets up Kayla Duran, who has some of that size you were talking about with Clemson. Here's Duran, clean run, trying to get behind Staub, but Staub is there to answer. Still in play for Jenna Bike, steering for Vaughn and Jennings, but it is McIver who comes to get it. I think if we had seen this push from BC earlier on in the game, we might have a different score line right now. Obviously, Kayla Duran has come in and added a different component to that offense, but the urgency and the composure, but the competitive fire that we're seeing now from all these BC players, I think we could have a different game if they played like this all game. Rolf Seema pushing for Olivia Vaughn. Antio was there. Sam Coffey settles it down. That nearly came up high, but not called. Headed by Kayla Jennings for Julia Jennings. Wide of Rolf Seema, throw in coming up for Clemson. It's not the worst thing to let a player who's farther away throw it in each time for Clemson. It's three moments. That's a foul on Rolf Seema right in front of the deer side official. 5.20 left. Eagles, who do have 15 shots. Sam Coffey's been held to just one. Clemson has done a great job on the stars for Boston College that we came on the show talking about. And that's a tribute to Clemson executing their game plan, making sure that they have the dangerous players marked at all times. Boy, that was dangerous going through the box, got through clean. Varela sends it forward, just has to knock it out. So it's another Clemson throw, content to come. Substitutions will come in for the Tigers. They will stop the clock here as Cyan Mercer, the sophomore, comes in for the first time in this game, as well as Renee Guillon, the freshman who started. 
Brooke Power trotting back on as well. And you'll see now Clemson just trying to secure this win, trying to get out of this with a 1-0 victory. They just put the substitute, number five, in for the fifth for the fifth man in their back line. So they've now gone to a five back. And you can see the Boston College has now gone to a four front. So everything very heavy-handed on that side of the field. Kayla Duran chasing after it. Kenzie Smith on it, though. Here is Mercer for the first time. Sam Coffey answers it. Kayla Duran working through. Has Olivia Vaughn was just enough behind her. Duran still on it for Sam Coffey. Delivers the ball in. Looking for Bike, who was offside. Flag up. So it did not end up mattering with four minutes remaining. And that urgency now that you feel as a player, we talked about BC playing frenzy. They're doing a much better job of, of staying composed on the ball, but still trying to go forward. And they're absolutely in panic mode now. There's three minutes and 50 seconds left, and they are throwing everything they can at this Tigers defense. Wonderful job by Gabby Carrero to create the corner. Sam Coffey comes in. This will be the fifth corner for Boston College. Four of the five have come in really the last eight minutes or so at this point. And again, watch for Duran, number 10 at the back post. Coffey, low delivery, answered by Clemson, out for another corner. 3.20 remaining from Newton. Eagles trailing by one. Deep breath for Coffey. Higher ball this time. Spinning. Bender right on the goal line. And it stayed loose for a while, but stayed out. And again, no foul is called on a hit in the box as Carrero went down. What a play. Bryant steps up to get it. Eagles can't afford to do anything but continue to push here. Clemson comes up with it. Brooke Power with 2.40 remaining. Offside is called and they'll stop the clock with 2.33. Let's take a look at that last corner of this whole sequence. Beautiful ball in by Coffey. McKeever, McKeever saves it with her thigh, enough. wow. And then it was Staub who got the second effort and it was the hit on the end of it as well. That is about as dangerous as you can get, my goodness. And then the no call. I think that should have been a penalty kick on Gabby Carrera. She hits her high on her leg without, without touching the ball. The refs are going to go in and, and take a look, which they are not allowed to do. So after the run of play ends, and this might not be the worst sort of timeout, pseudo timeout situation, especially in the Boston College side, who's been going full speed here lately. Time to just calm everyone down, get some water, take a deep breath. And I think it's really good that the, that the referees are going to go back and look at that because I think they have a legitimate a legitimate case for a penalty kick here. Well, they're going to review and see if it went across the goal line at any point. That's first. And it's so hard to tell on that angle. Now, McKeever is at least a little bit into the net, but certainly did not seem like enough that you could really tell. And remember, that whole ball has to cross the line. Certainly did not seem as if that crossed the goal line. Can't go back on the Carrero front. They can continue to look at the goal line. With 2.33 remaining, this is one of the new rules. We're gonna, you're seeing what the officials are looking at. Certainly there's not enough to, to overturn, and, and I think they did get it right on the field as it is. It's a remarkable save by the English goalkeeper Sandy McKeever and you see right there why her coach thinks she's the best goalkeeper on the ACC right now here you might be able to get a sense of how deep she was in goal and, and I, I think that's I think the that's right the right call, call. so this is going to stay 
at one nothing. 2.33 is left on the clock at this moment. They make sure to get it right at such a crucial stage. They are going to confirm no goal. So on we go, 2.33 remaining from Newton. one nothing. the lone goal, 19th minute by Clemson. Eagles set to go once again and apparently went too quickly, so no time came off anyway. And as a player, you're chomping at the bit. BC wants to keep this momentum going. And so when Clemson runs the clock down or when you have a uh, play called back, you're just screaming on the inside. You want to get going. You want to play this game. You want to push that ball forward. Micah Rolfsema will get it started. That was clipped. Carrero for Jillian Jennings has some space. Pass for Kayla Duran. Create space for himself. Not a bad decision, but it's wide. What a luxury it is at this stage to be able to throw Kayla Duran forward at this point and get her involved on the forward side. One fifty remaining. Varela knocked it down. Kayla Jennings. Try for Jillian Jennings. Only time for a few more chances. Wide for Gabby Carrero. Carrero comes back to the center. Deflected. Jillian Jennings goes down. Deflected. And this ball will roll out for the throw in coming up for Clemson. Officials letting this go. Clemson hasn't taken enough time. Immediately turned over. Sam Coffey coming back middle. Weaves all the way through. Forced out for a throw in for BC. Coming up on one minute left here in the ACC quarterfinal. Eagles looking for the equalizer. It's Clemson who steals the throw in. Gianna Mitchell, it's played clean. Rulsima knocks it out. They got to go quick. Rule Seema, quick throw in for Kayla Duran. Got a round at a good play. Duran. Jillian Jennings comes over. Trying to push for Gabby Carrero. Centering ball in. Kayla Jennings centers. Duran comes across. Here's Jenna Bike with space now. Bike coming off. Push to the ground. No foul. Clemson clears out of the side with 30 seconds left. There's another ball that came on the field. It bounced off of the fence, so that's why the Eagles couldn't go, and they whistle it dead. You can see now they're throwing everyone forward. Varela on the throw. Staub knocked it out. Sam Coffey settles, trying to create. Coffey pushing one in for Vaughn. Spins one, got a little flick. And it's McKeever who comes out to get it ahead of Kayla Jennings. And that might be the final opportunity. For the first time this year, the Eagles fall on home turf. Clemson going to the ACC semifinal with a 1-0 win. And you can't say BC didn't give it everything they had there in that second half. I mean, they threw everything at them. But today, Clemson executed their game plan. They were solid in the back. And they were able to really absorb and defend a fierce BC offense. Eagles end up out shooting Clemson 19-6, which is a little bit skewed because a lot of that came towards the end of the match when BC was really pushing forward. But for a while there, really a defensive clinic by Clemson, and it was the work that they did beforehand that forced the Eagles come back later and later, and really those final chances only were the final eight minutes or so when the Eagles finally got going on offense. But overall... Clemson did a wonderful job in this game. Clemson was excellent defensively, and that started from their front line. We saw Miranda Westlake put in tackle after tackle, whether it was on Gianna Mitchell or on Rafsima. They were relentless up front, and then in the midfield, they played so well together. They clogged the midfield. We didn't see Sam Coffey. We didn't call her name nearly as, nearly as often as we do. And then that back four, led by Staub, was just a unit. They never stepped out and left holes. They moved seamlessly together. They were a wall back there. 
take a look at the lone goal that crosses the goal line of this game. It came in the 19th minute, set up beautifully off of the throw-in, and eventually leads from the power pass to the goal for Speckmeyer. Wonderfully executed off the header. And the Clemson Tigers will move on to play the winner of North Carolina and Virginia Tech at last check. It was Carolina who had the lead in that game, and Boston College will wait for the NCAA tournament selections and see where they end up. Still 14-4-1, still a heck of a season in their NCAA tournament places, likely assured. But the Eagles fall on home turf for the first time this year, falling in the quarterfinals of the ACC to Clemson. They go over to thank their fans, and, and once again, there are no easy days in this conference. There are no easy days, and, and like the Clemson coach said, it was a game of moments today, and we saw some brilliant moments from both teams. Clemson was able to execute, was able to put one in the back of the net, and they came away with the game today. We have some finals for you. Can update the bracket. Two upsets in the first round. Clemson over Boston College, and Duke falling to Florida State one to nothing. It'll be Carolina, Clemson, Florida State, and Virginia, the ACC semifinal to come on Friday, and then the championship 4 o'clock on Sunday afternoon. Heck of a game here in Newton, and it is Clemson who gets revenge on the Eagles from that Boston College win in September, and it is a 1-0 win for the Tigers. For Rachel Wood and our entire ACC Network Extra crew, I'm Eric Galanti saying so long from Newton with a final score once again. Clemson won and BC nothing. All games airing on the ESPN Networks who are streaming live on the ESPN app or to watch this entire game on replay as well as other games on our family of ESPN Networks. Log on to the Watch ESPN app or download what Watch ESPN.com. This has been a presentation of ESPN.